I really underestimated TRPC, period. If you don't know what it is, it's a package that helps you achieve full stack type safety in your apps. For me personally, that's Next.js, so it helps you bring a feature that other frameworks have by default type safety across client and server into Next.js, which doesn't have it by default. TRPC is one big part of how this channel started. I eventually stopped using it because it couldn't do what I wanted to do, namely run on the edge runtime and stream responses back from the server to the client. It now can do that. And I only found out because of this great Jack Harrington video showing you exactly how to set TRPC up in Next.js 13. Now, take this example. On the right hand side, we have a list of items. What exactly these are is not too important, just a list of items that we're mapping over and displaying. And the current way we get those items is from an API via a GET request, of course, right? We get the variants that are on the page and then display them to the user. In the API that we used to get, we have three steps. Let me drag this over so you can get an idea of what happens. Now, the implementation details are not important. What is important is the three steps we have have to get the data. For example, the first one is the auth. Is the user allowed to get this data? One user can only get the data for them. Then the actual database call. Lastly, some optimizations. So the data that we transfer over the network, over the wire, is not super large. These optimizations are done on the server side, so less data actually gets sent to the client. The request is smaller and faster. And then lastly, we return that response from the server, which is this file right here, to the client. And on the client, this page right here, what you can see right here, is where we receive this data. And this is where TRPC really shines. Let me show you. The current way we receive this data is via React Query. Let's give this a bit more space. Via a regular use query that gets triggered once the page is loaded. We destructure three things from this use query. The actual data, a loading state, and a method to refetch this data. So if we created a second item in this list, hit create, you can see the data is refreshed. This is how we achieve that with this refetch. Then we give it a query key, not important what this does, it's for caching, and a query function. This query function is the important part. This allows us to actually get the data that makes the request to the API that I just showed you. To do that, we use Axios and make a request to this API under this URL, return the data, and now comes the important part. Okay, this data is typed as any. So this is really bad for user experience. This should not be typed as any. We could make any mistake and wouldn't even notice. That is why the approach to solve this currently, to solve this, is to go over into the API where we return the data, copy and paste the type from here over into this file. And that that is not ideal, I probably won't have to tell you. Because when you do changes in the API route on the server right here, change any business logic that has an effect on what you return, then you also need to copy that type again, paste it over onto the client where you receive the data. Now, instead of talking you through what TRPC does for us, because nobody really cares, it's pretty boring, let me show you. We can mark this entire code block and if I hit Control V, you're going to see the beauty of TRPC. Bam. This is one line of code. And the beauty of TRPC, which is nothing new, by the way, this is not Next.js specific at all. I'm just really hyped it works in the app router, is that this is now automatically typed, these test sets. Whatever they're called, it doesn't matter. This type is automatically inferred, passed back from the server to the client through some setup stuff. It's not too important. Again, if you want to set this up yourself, I'm going to link the Jack Harrington video. It shows you exactly how to set this up technically. I'm not going to bore you with this, but the beauty I want to show you is the separation of concerns. You remember in the original API route, the first implementation that I showed you, we have three steps. The auth, the database call, and the optimizations. Well, the auth, we abstract that away. Currently, we would have to do this step in every API route. Every time we would have to validate the user. With TRPC, we abstract this into one middleware that we can always reuse. So the actual business logic we are executing does not rely on the authentication and instead is only step two and three from before. As you can see, the syntax is just a bit different, right? This is the same as an API route, but instead of the whole dance with 
new response json.stringify we can literally just return this and the type that is automatically inferred from this is then passed back to the client what you just saw now this in itself is not nextjs specific nor is it new that's just how trpc works but it didn't work in the app router which i find really cool and do you remember when i said this is just a regular api route well because of the adapter we use for trpc under the hood a fetch adapter let's get rid of github copilot this means we can also export const runtime and make this API be served from the Vercel edge, which is faster, reduces cold starts and is closer to your users. Now this edge only works because I use Drizzle as my database. You don't see it here because it's abstracted away, but the database is actually a Drizzle or M database with Prisma. This unfortunately doesn't work. That is why I really like Drizzle. If you want to get more into that, I've done some videos on that in the past and this is how it works. Hey, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Yes, the setup for TRPC is very tedious. It was also one of the reasons I moved away. One, it couldn't do the things I wanted to do. That was obviously the main reason, but also the setup is a bit tedious. You need like five or six files across your entire app and it's kind. it just kind of sucks, to be honest. But you do it once and then you kind of forget about it, right? You don't need to worry about the setup anymore after that. And then you can just focus on the business logic, what we're all here to write the API endpoints. And the beautiful thing is you're not limited to either or. You can't just use gRPC or the API routes. You can use both at the same time, which I think is really beautiful. Let me know what you think about gRPC in Next.js 13. I would really like to know in the comments down below, and then I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one and bye-bye.